As we continue to talk about triangles, today we're going to start talking about congruent triangles. So we'll start with the basics today on what a congruent triangle is, and then in the next couple lessons we'll learn about different ways to prove them congruent. So we're going to use properties of congruent triangles, and we're going to prove that triangles are congruent by using what it means to be congruent. So before we do that, I'd like us to do a couple warm-ups. Um, this should make your task attack a lot easier the next day. So if I said I have a triangle FGH, and I said name all sides and angles, uh, you could draw a picture of the triangle, or by knowing that F, G, and H are our vertices in the triangle, we have a side that connects F to G, a side that connects G to H, and another side that connects F to H. So I've got sides F, G, G, H, and F, H. Now I've also got each vertice um, is the vertex of a, an angle. So I have angle F, angle G, and angle H. All right, this um, next question talks about the last unit we did, or the last section we did. What is true about angle K and angle L, and we need to know why? So in these two triangles, I see that I is congruent to N, J is congruent to M, and they're asking why is this third angle congruent to each other? Or what do we know about them? Uh, well, they are congruent to each other because of the theorem we learned last time, the third angle theorem. It says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then their third angle is congruent as well. And to go way back, what does it mean for two segments to be congruent? A lot of us say that's, that congruent means same or equal. So for segments, they have length. So segments that are congruent have the same length. Uh, the new words we're going to have today, corresponding angles, corresponding sides, which we've used corresponding, um, so it should be a decent with those and then congruent polygons. So we'll start with some definitions. Geometric figures are congruent if they are the same size and shape. So same everything. Um, corresponding angles and corresponding sides. Remember corresponding meant matching. So that means that they're in the same position in their polygons uh, with an equal number of sides. So for shapes to be congruent they have to be they have to have the same amount of sides. So they have to be the same type of shape. So two polygons are congruent if and only if their corresponding are, sides are congruent. Thus, triangles that are the same size and shape are congruent. So um, when we talk about congruent figures, notice the way we name our figures like we've done in the past, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Now down here, if it's got four sides, we just call it a polygon or if it's a rectangle, that kind of stuff we'll work on later. Uh, but you can just call them polygon, PQRS, and WXYZ. So notice here in the way that it's color-coded, the, the angles that have one arch, A and D, are the same color, and they're listed in the same position because they're congruent to each other. B and E, who both have two arches and are blue, are both listed as the second letter, and the angles with three arches, C and F, are listed last and are both green. So notice that that's done on purpose because the matching pieces will always be in matching places in our congruent statements. So this will make our congruent statements very easy to use. The first two letters are congruent, so A, angle A is congruent to angle D. The second two letters as angles are congruent, so B is congruent to E, and C is congruent to F. You could do that from a picture, but now you see that you could do it just from this statement as well. Same with our letters. A, B, first, second, is congruent to D, E, first, second, and so on and so forth. So a helpful hint, two vertices that are the endpoints of sides are called consecutive vert vertices. Um, so if you look at these, A and B, since they're endpoints of the same segment, they're consecutive. And... Um, when we name our figures, we name the vertices in consecutive order. So polygon PQRS could also be RSPQ, but it could not be RPQS because that doesn't go consecutive. R to P does not go consecutive. You'd have to have RSPQ or RQPS. Okay? 
Um, when you write a statement such as this, you're also st stating which parts are congruent, just like we did with those pictures. So let's tr practice a couple of those. If I tell you, or I'm, you're given, that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle STW, and you are asked to identify all corresponding congruent parts, let's start with the angles. So if I wanted to say what angle is congruent to angle P, well I see that P is listed first, so angle S must be congruent to angle P. And then which angle is congruent to Q? Well it's listed second, so T is congruent to Q, and R is congruent to, congruent to W. Now we said triangles also have sides, so a side goes between the two vertices, so side PQ, which is first, second, is congruent to ST, the second and third, QR, is congruent to TW, and PR is congruent to SW. Now let's use um, some of these, knowing our congruent parts from our statements, let's use that to find some missing measures. So if I give you that ABC is congruent to DBC, so now we know which parts are congruent to each other, what can we do to find the value of X? Well, if I look in the picture, I see that they say um, that B, C, D, and because this is a straight line, B, C, A, are both right angles because um, this is a perpendicular line. I can see it because of that right angle symbol. So if those are right, both right angles, what does that tell me about each of them? Well, if they're both right angles, then their angles should be congruent, and we actually have a theorem that said that. That was the right angle theorem. It says all right angles are congruent. That's a right angle theorem. So if their measures are, or if their angles are congruent, what does it tell us about their measures? Or what does it mean to be congruent? It means that their measures are equal. So the measure of BCA is congruent to the measure, or is equal to the measure of BDC. Now we're going to go in the picture and plug in such measures. BCA says is 2x minus 16, and BCD has a right angle symbol, so that means it's 90. Now if we were finding x, we're going to go ahead and solve. Um, all my x's are on one side, so that's good. I see minus 16, so I'm going to add 16 to both sides. And then now I have 2x, so to get rid of the 2, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and I get that x is 53. Okay, now we're going to look at another example, same picture, but this time we are going to find the measure of D, B, C. So this angle up here. Well, um, if I look in the picture, I see that I know most of the measures on this side of the triangle. We knew that this one was a right angle, and that one's 49.3. Well, if I need DBC, which in this triangle is angle B, if I can find angle B from the other triangle, we learned that those are in matching positions, so they're going to be the same. So let's start with triangle ABC, and notice there, there are three angles, um, ABC, BCA, and angle A should all add up to 180 because it's a triangle, so triangle sum theorem. Now if I plug in the numbers that we do know, a is 49.3 and BCA is 90. And if I simplify and combine my like terms, and then to get angle ABC by itself, we're going to subtract 139.3 from both sides. And we get that the measure of ABC is 40.7. Well, I know that this angle is supposed to be the same as this angle, so ABC should be the same as DBC because corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent. So there's really not a name for that theorem, so you just list it out. Notice how we said corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent. So if they're congruent, we learned that that also means they're equal. So if ABC is 40.7, well then so is DBC. We'll try one more that are similar to these. It says, given that ABC is congruent to DEF, we're going to find the value of X. So, if I look in the picture, I see that the only measure that has an X in it 
is AB. So I'm using a side. If I look in the congruent statement, AB, the first and second letters, I just learned should be congruent to, to lines DE because they're in matching positions in the triangle. So they're corresponding sides of congruent angles, which means they are congruent. Well, what does it mean to be congruent? That means that they're equal, which I have to do before I can plug anything in. I say that the measures are equal, and then I see that measure AB is 2x minus 2, and DE in the picture is 6. So I'm going to set those equal to each other, and we're going to solve by first adding 2 to both sides, and then we are going to divide both sides by 2, and we get that x is 4. Now we're going to look at a couple proofs. Um, so here's the picture that goes along with it. It tells us that AD bisects BE and BE bisects AD. And then in the picture as well, the symbols AB is congruent to DE and A is congruent to D. And our goal is to prove these two triangles are congruent, ABC and DEC. So uh, remember our two column proof. Don't worry, we don't have to create our own proof. We just have to fill in the pieces of the proof we're given. So the first part we need to do, we have statement number one says that A is congruent to D. Well, how did we know that? Um, and since it's the first step in our proof, hopefully this is an easy one, um, I see it in the given. So I'm going to say my first reason is given. The next one we're looking for the statement with the reason being vertical angles are congruent. So I have to know what vertical angles are. Um, if you need to, you can look it up. But vertical angles, when two lines cross, are the non-adjacent angles, or the ones that cross from each other. So in our picture, we do have vertical angles. So if those are congruent, we want to say that BCA is congruent to DCA. And our next step, we have the reason third angle theorem, which we talked about just a little bit ago that says if we have two angles in one triangle congruent to two angles in another, then we can say that their third angles are congruent. So we said this angle is congruent to this angle. These two vertical angles are congruent. So the third angle, B and E, are congruent. So ABC is congruent to DEC because of the third angle theorem. Now, how do we know that AB is congruent to DE? If you can't figure out a reason why, always go back and check, and this one is in the given. So AB is congruent to DE because it's given to us. Now we have one more given, and there's one piece we haven't used, that AD bisects BE and BE bisects AD. Well, now we need to interpret what does it mean to bisect. Well, we learned that to bisect means it gets cut in half. So if AD bisects BE, the halves that it creates is BC and CE. Just like the other one, when BE bisects AD, AD is cut in half, creating AC and CD, which um, when they're bisected, remember that means they're cut in half and the halves are congruent, so we'd come up with this statement here. So notice in our steps of our proof, we have one, two, three sets of angles congruent, and we have one, two, three sets of sides congruent. So we have proven all three sides congruent to all three sides, all three angles congruent to all three angles. So now, why are the triangles congruent? Because of what it means for triangles to be congruent. So the definition of congruent triangles. We will do a couple more proofs in class together, and I'll see you soon.